Number six, letter A. Given a 48 volt battery and 24 ohm and 96 ohm resistors, find the current and power for each when connected in series. All right, so here's my series circuit. I know that the uh, power, uh, excuse me, that the total voltage here is going to be supplied is going to be 48. All right, volts. I know the resistances, so maybe why don't we color code this a little bit. Let's turn this into green, and let's call that one a green one. And this will be blue, and that'll be blue. So in other words, the resistance of this one is going to be 24 ohms, and the resistance of this one will be 96 ohms. Okay. Now what we have to remember here is that the voltage uh, being supplied by the battery here is uh, not constant over each resistance. Okay. Voltage is going to be constant in a parallel organization, not in series. What is constant, though, is the current. And the way I remember that is by IS, or IS. The current in series is constant. Okay? So what I need to do is I need to somehow figure out the current now that it's flowing through the circuit. And the only way to do that is to take this circuit, take this complex circuit, right? Anything more than two resistors, two resistors in it will consider complex. And we're going to try to boil it down into an into an equivalent circuit, meaning a circuit that now has only one resistance in it. So I, you, I know you might be saying, well, how the heck, you know, there's two here, there's one here, what the heck are you talking about? Well, these two resistors in series act as if there is a single resistor with a resistance of 24 ohms plus 96 ohms. Okay, they would act the same way. So when we do the math there, right, when we add them together, we're going to come up with a value of 120 ohms. So in other words, I just use this formula over here on the right-hand side, that the, re the resistance in series, the total resistance in series, or you can think of this as the equivalent resistance in series, that's probably what I'm going to call from now on, is going to be equal to simply the sum of all the resistances. So what I can do is I can draw a new circuit. Right, and draw a new circuit with knowing by, and I know now the value of the total or equivalent resistance. Now, what I can do is I can now take the voltage that was given, the 48 volts, and I can apply that now. I know this voltage is now being only theoretically applied over one resistor. I can now calculate then the current. Okay, so what this allows me to do, I'm going to use the formula uh, V equals IR. It doesn't matter which one you really use. You know, these are all, this is Ohm's law. This is just a variation of the formula over here on the right-hand side. I remember it as Veer. But what you want to do is you want to calculate, you want to plug this in as the voltage here being supplied by the battery is equal to the total current, all right? The current that will be constant in series multiplied by this equivalent resistance, all right, that we just found of 120. So what this allows me to do then is I'm going to plug in the 48. I'm going to solve for I, and I know that this is 120. So what this allows me to do is find now the total current that's flowing around, or aka it's going to be 0.4 amps worth of current. Now, what this tells me is that around this simple, simplified circuit, there is going to be 0.4 amps of current flowing through it. What that allows me to now do is also realize that it's the same exact thing that's then flowing around this circuit with the two resistors. The reason being is because this circuit is a simplification. It is an equivalent circuit to this picture. So what I found now is that there's 0.4, of, 0.4 amps of current flowing around this entire series circuit. And I know that the current in series is constant. In other words, the current flowing through this resistor has to equal the current flowing through that resistor. Okay. What that now allows me to then do is that now will allow me to calculate the uh, current. Well, actually, wait a minute. So I go back to the problem, right? It said calculate the current. Okay. So I did just calculate the current. It's 0.4 amps. All right. Um, now that I know the current flowing through each, so maybe what I'll do is I'll move this up a little bit. So this will call I is equal to 0.4 amps. And the same thing here. The current's flowing the same. All right. Now it wants to find the power. So what we need to do is we need to realize we know the resistance, we know the current, and we got to find power. How do we do that? We do that via the formula. Power is equal to current squared times the resistance. So this is going to be simple. It's 0.4 squared multiplied now by your resistance of 24 for the green one. All right, so plug that on into the calculator. So 0.4 squared times 24. 
and this is about 3.84, so 3.84 watts. Okay, that will be the power flowing through the green resistor. And then I'm gonna do the same calculation. P is equal to I squared R. This time it's 0.4 squared. I mean, that's the same, but uh, the uh, re resistance is gonna be 96. That was interesting. Kind of saw my brain freezing there for a second, right? You actually heard my brain freezing. So 0.4 squared times 96. 15.36, or I guess about 15.4, and that's in terms of watts. So that'll be the power dissipated by that guy, all right? By that resistor. All right, so that takes care of, uh, great. Uh, a, now B, repeat when the resistors are in parallel. Yes, I love this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to erase all this, okay? And realize now that we are dealing with a parallel circuit. All right, so real quick, let's just sketch it. Here's the simple circuit. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Let's call this uh, green. Let's call this blue. So the resistance here through the green one is four, uh, 24. The resistance here flowing through the blue one is going to be 96. Now, I can also take this parallel. Oh, also, remember they told us that it's 48 volts. Okay. Now, in parallel, the voltage is what's constant. So in other words, I remember that by VP. Voltage in parallel is constant, all right? So if it is a 48-volt battery, then the voltage over this resistor is also 48. Okay, it's also 48. Ohms. Uh, no, but ohms. Oh, volts. What am I doing? Why did I write an R? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. Voltage is 48 volts. There we go. And the voltage over this one is also 48. So 48 volts. Now, this one is a lot easier to calculate the power because we didn't, we knew that this was constant and they told us the voltage of the battery and we knew that the voltage is constant. So now what all we need to do is we need to simply now find a formula that relates these two. Because if I know the resistance of this resistor and I know the voltage applied to that resistor, I can find the power uh, dissipated by that resistor by using the formula power is equal to V squared over R. I could not do that in the series case because the voltage that they gave me, I knew wasn't constant. Okay? I could have done it a different way possibly, but... That's the way I chose to do it. Uh, it wouldn't have been as, it's not as straightforward as you think. We get, it's probably best to think about solving for the equivalent resistance, all right, like we did using this formula. But for this problem, because we didn't know what the current was flowing through each, right? And all we knew was the total voltage. So I kind of had to find that equivalent resistance. In this particular case, since I know the voltage over each and I know the resistance of each, I can simply just calculate it right away. So this is going to be 48 volts squared divided by the resistance of 96. I'm calculating the one in blue first. Is going to now be, so I'm calculating the power first. So this is 48 squared divided by 96. So that's 24. So this is 24 watts, okay? And then that's the one for the blue. And then let's do the one for the green. So this is the same formula. It's gonna be 48 squared now all over the lower resistance of 24. So the power here is simply going to be 48 squared divided by 24, 96, all right? 96 now watts. And that's the one for the green, okay? Uh, now what they want is, uh, so they, we found the power by, you know, uh, over each. Now notice the powers, this, these were the powers in series, right? So notice what happened. The power went up, okay? Overall, um, the power, right? The power. So now what we need to do is we need to find the current. So we can do this in a couple of ways. Uh, I think I'm just going to use Ohm's law again because these were the values that were given. I'm not. I, we can use it doing. We can do it using the power too. But uh, you know we already have the resistance and the voltage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Ohm's law. I is equal to V over R, and I realize that if I do the one in blue first, the voltage there is 48, the resistance is 96, and therefore when I do uh, this particular math, 48 over 96, it's going to become out to exactly a half. So 0 0.5, 0, however many sig figs, maybe another one, whatever, amps. So there's a half unit of current flowing through. And then that was for the uh, blue one. Great. 
And then now I'll do it for the green. So I is equal to V over R. I will then be equal to um, 48 all over 24. So the current now is going to be 48 over 24. Two. Two now amps, right? 2.00 oh amps. And notice one thing here about this, right? Um, less resistance in this green one. Let me just highlight that in green over here. Less resistance in the green one meant, and same potential meant greater flow. Okay, there's less resistance to the flow, so the current is higher. Do you see that? Same thing about this 0.5. All right, there's more resistance here, so there should be less flow flowing through that. Now, current for E, yeah, current. So th those are the values. So as you can see now, the current is not constant flowing through each, and that should make sense because the current flowing around this circuit now has a choice of either to go this way through that resistor or go through that resistor. It will wind up going through both, but it might not go through both equally. It'll go through the path of least resistance, all right? So more current flows through less resistance. That should hopefully make sense. The series organization, you don't have a choice, right? When it's in series, when you got two things connected, it doesn't have a choice of where to go. It has to go this way no matter what. All right? So the current will be constant in that case. It can't. It doesn't have an alternative way to go. All right? As it does in parallel. So anyway, all right, that's enough of the diatribe. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.